are reading. We are reading from the book of Job. Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. Okay. We will read. I know some people don't uh, enjoy long reading, but we have to read because it's the word of God that, that, that saves. It's the word... It's not what I say, but what the Holy Spirit says in his word. So we need to, we're reading Job chapter 33 from verse 12 to 18. And then I will skip and then I'll go to 27 to, to 33. Okay. Job 33 from verse 12. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Look, in this you are not righteous. I will answer you, for God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. In order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So that was 18. Go, jump down to 27. Then he looks at men and says, I have seen that's the man that has been saved. Okay, not God now. The man looks at other men and say, I have sinned and perverted what was right and it did not profit me. So, God will redeem his soul from going down to the pit and his life shall see the light. Behold, God works all these things. Twice, in fact, three times with a man to bring back his soul from the pit that he may be enlightened with the light of life. Give ear, Job, listen to me. Hold your peace and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify you. If not, listen to me. Hold your peace and I will teach you wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. According to that last verse we just Read. You say, hold your peace, listen to me, and I will teach you wisdom. Father, we are all ears. We are holding our peace. We have come quietly and humbly before you because we want to learn from you. We want to hear from you. We want you to speak to us because you give to men chances again and again just so that their, their souls will be redeemed from the pit. So my father and my king, as we listen to you this morning, Father, help us to hear your voice. And as we hear your voice, Father, let us live by what you are telling us so that it might be well with us, so that our souls will, will be spared and we will not end up in that terrible pit. Thank you, Father, for, for, for being so mindful of us, for going ahead of us and trying to help us to avoid every pain, every danger, every suffering. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus, that made you come to this earth to die on our behalf. Father, we bless your name. Lord Jesus, we bless your name. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So I welcome everybody. Again, to this glorious service, 
We thank the Lord. It's a beautiful day physically and spiritually is even more awesome. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the, the title of this message is The Wisdom of God. The Wisdom of God. We are here to learn from God. It is God who is teaching us wisdom today. Amen? Okay. So I know, we know, we all know the book, yeah, at least most people know about the story of Job. Yeah. So sometimes we learn through affliction or when we go through hard times. And um, we can take example from children especially. You, you see a child running around. You can see the danger and they are running around, keep, 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 playing, running up. You are like, stop, stop, stop. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. Just sit down, play nicely. The more you tell them, sit down, play nicely, the, the more they, <laughs> they run around even more recklessly. And before you know, bang, they fall and they cry. And you say, huh, I told you so. Now, so for, for a few minutes, they will learn, yeah? They'll sit down and they'll be quiet and they'll come to you. You hug them. And, and for, for some time, they'll sit down and be quiet. Is it different from us adults? No. The whole world is hearing. Jesus is coming. Prepare yourself. Do what is right. Live righteously. But people do not hear. And some of the people who are, who are blessed, I would say, you know, they will keep going through the, mount, you know, the wilderness, going around the wilderness, falling on their faces, falling on their faces until sometimes they learn. So we are all the same. So today we want to do what Elihu suggested in, in, in that Job 33.33. He says, listen to me, hold your peace and I will teach you wisdom. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. And we want to hold our peace and listen while the Holy Spirit himself will teach us. However, yeah, so we are, we are all learning together. I'm not speaking to you. I'm learning just as you are learning, okay? We are all listening to the great teacher, the Holy Spirit. We want to learn the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of man. Amen. We have to listen and be enlightened. If you read verse, verse 30 in my New King James Version, says, to bring back his soul from the pit. That means you are, you are there at the mouth of hell. And today the word of God is going to snap you back. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Take you out of hell. That is the purpose of the word of God, to enlighten us. He says the uh, Job 33 verse 30, to bring back his soul from the pit that he may be enlightened with the light of life. Because that, that place, hell, is a very dark place. And, you know, nobody. You, you hear testimonies of people whom, whom God has been merciful to. Who, they have gone to see hell. Instantly when they wake up, they, they fall on their faces, Jesus is Lord, Jesus, I will save you with all mine. It's not, a, it's not a joke. It's true. So we are the lucky ones that we hear these things willingly and we accept them. And we are here with all our ears open, the, the ears of our heart the, that we are just open and say, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Strengthen us today. We want to hear your voice. We, we want to live by your word. And we, and, we, and we pray that we would never slip back. Yeah. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So when we are being enlightened with the light of life, that means we have the light of Christ. I am the light of the world. There is no, every other place is darkness. Every other place is darkness. We are so blessed that we have the light. He says, I am the light. And because of that, he gives us his light to go and shine for others. So let us focus on Jesus and listen to what his spirit is telling us. So the, the book of Job, you can, you can call him the suffering man. 
and and you can you know you can relate it to Jesus. There are places you will read, you will just see Jesus described. You know, we know that Jesus is in every book of the Bible, and when we you read it with understanding, you see. So Job, the book of Job is like you know all suffering, with of course a blessing at the end, and he didn't suffer for what he did. Yeah, so he's a suffering man, and what do we call Jesus? Man of sorrows. We call Jesus man of sorrows. He he did not suffer for what he did. Rather, he suffered for our transgressions. For our sins he suffered. He was afflicted, yet he never cursed God. He never, you know, changed his mind. Talking about Job now. He was steadfast in his trust in God. Even his wife advised him. To, to, to curse God. He said, she said, curse God and live. How can I curse God and die? Whatever. How can, you, how can you? How can you? So his wife, and he told his wife, please leave me. You are talking like a foolish woman. You know, can, should we expect good from God and not expect bad? So even though he didn't fully understand what was going on at that time, he, he, he still said, well, God gave me seven sons and three daughters and he took them away. All my cows and goats and, and everything he, he gave me, they were just gone like that. So he said, well, I'll, I'll take it. Whatever God wants, let him do for me because I know his will is perfect. This is what we always have to remember. It does not matter what Satan throws at you at, in the physical don't let your eyes, don't let your physical eye deceive you. It did not deceive Job. And none of us have suffered what Job has suffered here. So if Job went through this, he did, he did not understand. Now we have this story. I always say the stories in the Bible are there for us. Other people went through this thing so we can learn. So if in this generation we don't learn, then God help us. Others suffered. Jesus himself said, others are planted, I send you into the harvest. Mm -hmm. We have to learn from these things. Mm -hmm. God did not take time to put these things down. I know many people say, oh, the Bible, uh, one page is miss missing, 20 pages have been torn up. I, have you finished reading the one that you have? When we finish reading this one, then we can talk. Because the word of God is life. It, it, the word of God is always speaking. So we, when we read one page, we should stop and meditate and say, and ask ourselves, what is the Lord saying to me? Instead of thinking about the page that is still missing in, in the Red Sea, one scroll that miss. Who cares? God will speak to you without the Bible too. So we need to open our hearts. So, so Job, Job's wife advised him to curse God. His friends came and said, ha, my friend, we know you long. We have really been with you a long time. Are you sure you have not offended God? Such bad things don't just happen to good people. Tell us now. We will pray with you. We will agree with you for forgiveness. Job said, what are you guys talking about? I have searched myself. If this is what God has decided that he wants to do with me, well, let it be. He knows best. So, and, and that's what I want to tell us today. Like they say, I've got news for you. Life is never one-sided. That's why I keep saying, don't look at it with your physical eyes. Life is never one-sided. The word of God is never only, does not always only mean one thing. That's why many people are hearing this, but to every person it means another thing. Because the word of God meets you individually at your point of need. So don't say, I read this and I know that it, this is exactly what it means. No, revelation is level by level, glory to glory. So we, we need to have that open mind and not treat the Bible like uh, Bible scholars. Just read intellectually. No, 
It's the, the word of God is spirit. The word I speak to you is spirit and they are life. It grows. It, it manifests. It turns things around. It, it makes things happen. With word, God created heaven and earth. So look around you and tell me, you know, that, you know, everything God spoke is still happening. He doesn't have to say it again and again. Let there be trees. Let there be fish. Let there be this. No. He says it once and it keeps yielding. It keeps, it keeps you know, in the desert, things are growing. In the, in the fertile sort of thing. So let us really be open-minded. Open our hearts. To, to hear what God says. And God specifically says that his ways are not, I, I, want, to, I want to take us there. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. Let's, because I have said it, we don't want the word of man. We want to hear from the Holy Spirit. 55, Isaiah 55, from verse 8. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So how can you think that your little mind can contain everything that is in God's mind? He, he reveals in, in pieces, in, in, in portions. You cannot have the whole counsel of God. He speaks to you at the point of your need. Because we are, we are finite and God is infinite. He is endless. How can we contain the whole of who God is? So this is just a reminder to be open-minded when you deal with God. Don't, don't, don't put him in a box. He is able to do anything, turn anything around. Whatever he wants, he can do and he will do if we agree with him, if we stand with him, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. So, and again, I really want to show us scriptures so that I don't just talk. Deuteronomy 29, 29. I like that because it's easy to remember. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Chapter 29, verse 29. Very easy to remember. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Listen to what it says. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words that we may do all the words of this law so god reveals certain things to us as we are able to grasp but there are certain things that are still his yeah the secret things belong to the lord our god if he doesn't want to reveal it you cannot force him to reveal it he is still God. Amen? But those things which are revealed belong to us. So we take what we know and walk with it. And stop, you know, going to places that we don't need to go. Everything that you need for holiness and righteousness, God has given to us, says Peter. So we have to open our minds and walk with what we have. So how do we walk in wisdom? How do we walk in the true, true wisdom of God? It's by listening to the Holy Spirit of God. He alone knows his full counsel. And, he, and because you walk with him, he will reveal it to you as it comes. Mm -hmm. And that also, I want, if, you know, if people who are writing should write it down. People who are listening after you can pause the recording and you can go and look, look it up. Because when you look it up yourself, it will stick. So First John, first epistle of St. John, chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Epistle, 
first episode, first letter of St. John chapter 5, verse 6 to verse 8. It says, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. He's repeating it. You have to ask yourself, why is he repeating this? And it is the spirit who bears witness. Why am I saying that? Because I just asked us a question. How do we walk in wisdom? We walk in wisdom by listening to the Holy Spirit of God. So now John is saying, um, and it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Okay? And we know who, who is the Word? Jesus Christ is the Word of God. There are three that bear witness in heaven. But in this place, John did not say the Son. He said the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So that you have to understand the father speaks and his spirit brings it to pass. He, he speaks his word and the Holy Spirit makes that word to be manifest. That's why Jesus was made manifest on earth like a human being by the power of the Holy Spirit. Gabriel went to Mary and said, the spirit of God will come upon you and the child that you will bear will be called son of God. So it was the Holy Spirit that came on Mary. God spoke the word and it became flesh. The word was made flesh. Amen? So we need to understand these things. So and it is the spirit that counsels, the spirit of truth. Even Jesus is true because he's, he's one person. He, you know, he's one person, not three people, but three, three offices, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So different compartments, you would say, but one man. And there are three. So these three agree in heaven. And there are three that bear witness on earth for you and me. The spirit, listen to this. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one as well. So in heaven is the father, the word, the spirit. On earth, it is the spirit, the water, and the blood. Why? Why is there a difference? So, and you know, for homework, I would like everyone to read that First John 5 through and, and you know, for more insight. We listen to the Holy Spirit because the Spirit, the water and the blood always agree. These are life-giving. These are life-giving. The Spirit gives life. You know that Without water, you will soon dry out and die, yeah? So water gives life. And without blood, if we are, the blood in your body is drained out, you die as well, yeah? So the spirit, the water, and the blood always agree. These are life-giving. Without water, no life. Without blood, no life. Without the spirit in you, no life. Without the breath in you, no life. And there's a mystery tied to it. At birth, think, listen to this well. At birth, Jesus came by water and blood. And at death, on the cross, he departed living water and blood. Hallelujah. Do we get it? Every woman, when she's ready to give birth, what, what comes out first? The water. The water breaks. For, for adults who understand what I'm saying. So the water breaks, and of course, then blood follows. That is life-giving. That woman is now giving life to a newborn. Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, also came out that way. The water breaks, the blood comes out. When he died on the cross and the pierced his side, what came out? Water and blood. What was he giving birth to? You and me, the church. 
he, that's how you give birth. Which, which other person dies and they pierce him and you see water and blood coming out? Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Pierce yourself, water will not come out. <laughs> blood will come out and not water. So these are the things, logical things that people should just sit down. If they would just sit down long enough to think, they will realize that Jesus is not Mohammed. You cannot compare him to Mohammed. You cannot compare him to Elijah. You cannot compare him to Moses. You cannot compare him to any other human being that has lived because we were made out of dust and to dust we return. Jesus came by water and blood at his birth and he departed on the cross the same way he came, giving birth to his church by pouring out himself. The water and the blood flowed out of his side. Hallelujah. So that is why we know that we are born again when you accept him into your life because he gives you a new birth. You, you are born again because what is born of the flesh is of the flesh. What is born of the spirit is of the spirit. When you were born by your mother, you, you, you are a child of the flesh. But once you accept Jesus, you are born of the spirit because his spirit gives you new birth. He was, you know, he did it at birth and he, he did the same at his death. So these are simple little things that, you know, like I said, the Holy Spirit will give one nugget here, one nugget there. And if we would listen, we would really know that Jesus is Lord. Amen? Jesus is Lord. So let us go back to Job. And listen to what Elihu has to say. Job. So Elihu says, hold your peace and I will teach you wisdom. So let us. Go and see how, what are the dif different or various ways that God speaks to us? How does the Holy Spirit teach us wisdom? How, how does God speak to us, his children? So that Job 33 from verse 14, I will read. From verse 14. Job 33 verse 14. For God may speak in one way or in another. He has different ways of speaking to us because he understands our level. He understands who we are. But it says there, yet man does not perceive it. God speaks to, to everybody every day, every time. But we don't hear because we don't sit down long enough to listen. He and because he speaks to us while we are awake and we don't listen, he says, okay, when, when they are asleep, when they are calm, you know, so, you know, like babies, when they are small, you wait for them to sleep, then you can cut their nails, <laughs> their fingernails, or do some certain things to them because they won't fight you, or, you know. So God says, okay, let, let, let my baby sleep. Then I will speak to them in the quiet of their sleep. I'll speak to them. So he said there, Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then God opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So God, he, he, God goes beyond measure to show us his love, to speak to us, to relate to us, to try and make the truth known to us so that we don't so that go into that pit, so that we don't fall like children. You tell a child, sit down, sit down, sit down. They are still running around until they fall and, and hurt themselves, and then they cry. 
God wants to save us from, from, from this. So he speaks continuously. So, in order, that's, what, that's verse 17, in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man, because we think we know too much. It's like that two-year-old running around, sit down, sit down. <laughs> you know, it's funny to them. They don't, they don't see the danger that you see. We don't see the danger that God sees until we sit down and listen. And, and he, wants us, he wants to save us from our pride because that's what destroys us. He keeps back our souls from the pit, verse 18, and our lives from perishing by the sword. See, God wants to save us from from the pit and from the sword. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So God loves to speak to us. Yet we as human beings are often too busy or too fleshy to listen. We are much more concerned with the things of the flesh. The moment Somebody wants to talk to you about God. That's when your tummy starts rumbling. Oh, I need food. So what the person is saying, you're not hearing. You're thinking of, oh, what food shall I go back and eat? And I bind that and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We have to rebuke the flesh so that our spiritual ears will be open to the wisdom of God. Amen? We, we have to rebuke over busyness. We are too busy to wait on the Lord, to spend time with him because it is only in the quiet place that we can truly hear him. And yet, upon all that, God is still looking for ways because of his loving kindness, because of his mercy. It is not my will that any should perish. My children, please come back home. Do not walk into the pit. I know you don't know where you are going, but listen to my voice. Come back home. God, in his loving kindness and mercy, keeps on speaking. A lot of people, a lot of people claim that they love God, that they are Christians, but they never stop to call him up and say, Daddy, how are you today? Too busy. Too busy. If you love somebody, you, you text them, you call them, you, you visit them. But we call ourselves Christians. We, we say, oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we never take out time. 24 hours God has given us. We are happy to go to work eight hours or more. We are happy to, to sit in front of the TV for two hours, no issue. But tell somebody, come to church. How long does your church last? Two hours. Oh, no, that's too long, that's too long for me. I, you know, no, no, no. no. They, they don't. And this is their life. This is salvation. To. So, for those who listen, just remember, when you love someone, you call them up. That's a very natural thing to do. So when you wake up, dial heaven. Jesus, my dear, sweet Jesus, how are you this morning? Dial heaven. Call him up. How are you, daddy? Holy Spirit, good morning. How are you this morning? What? What shall we do together? God always needs one man to stand with him to do great things. Abraham was one man. Noah was one man. Moses was one man. He one man that agrees. Like Mary, one little girl. Let it be done to me according to your will. She surrendered her will. One man. And when you do that, then God will send help us. Like Jesus says, you know, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send in harvesters. But one man must first agree. 
like he says in Ezekiel, I looked and I did not find anybody who would stand in the gap. But God is faithful. God is faithful and he always wants to talk to us. He wants to be with his people. I mean, he is love, so he cannot help loving you. That's why it hurts him when you disobey, when I disobey, when we do wrong. And I give us further examples. If we go to, first of all, Exodus. We are Exodus and Deuteronomy, I want to show us a few things. Let's go to Exodus first. Exodus chapter 19. It's good to write them down. It might be useful sometime. Like I say, we can hear, but maybe we don't need it today. We might need it another day. Exodus 19, verse 11 says, Exodus 19, 11, And let them be ready for the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. So this is God Almighty, loving his people so much. If you read the, the preparation before, God told Moses to go tell the, everyone that they should sanctify themselves and come and wait because God God was telling them you know you have seen the miracles you have seen we read earlier on the chapter verse 4 you have seen what I did to the Egyptians it's not that people don't see you've seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles wings it's like I cared for you I brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. And he still adds, for all the earth is mine. So he didn't didn't just end it with the Jewish people. He says, you are my special people, but the, every other person on earth is also mine, but I've chosen you. What, what a privilege. If you will just hear and obey my voice and keep my covenant, do what I say, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. Even though I love everyone in this world, I have chosen you to be a special people unto me. And you saw, you physically with your own eyes, after 400 years of slavery in a foreign land, you have seen how I brought you all out. Was that not enough evidence? People are looking for evidence that God exists. These people saw the evidence. That's why I'm saying when people ask you such questions, just tell them when you are ready, come back and we talk. People are asking, how how do I know? Open your heart. Receive Jesus. The Holy Spirit will teach you. These people saw physically. They were physically slaves in Egypt. And in one night, God took all of them out and, and they came out with all the riches of Egypt. Was that not enough proof? So, we need God's wisdom. Amen? Amen. So, God always wants to speak to his people. That's, that's, one, that's one verse. That Exodus 19 again. If you go down to verse 19, to 19, 19. Exodus 19, 19. It says, And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. Everybody heard God's audible voice. They heard.
if we go to 20, Exodus 20, before I, I jump to Deuteronomy, let me just finish with, with Exodus. So Exodus 20, from 18 to 19. Now, all the people witnessed the thunderings. You can you, you see it, 1919 says there was this, you know, blast of the trumpet, yeah? So all the people, so Exodus 20, 18 now. All the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. You see, God had told them earlier in chapter 19, Moses, go tell the people to, to you know, clean themselves up. You know, when you go to the queen, you don't just go to the queen in your pajamas, do you? You clean yourself up. You go look for some nice, you know, thing to wear. So God is like, go tell my people to clean themselves up. Because I, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the God of all gods, I want to come and meet my people. And they were happy. They went and washed their clothes. But look at what happened now in, in 20 verse Nine, uh, verse 18 to 19. When they heard and saw, you know, the, 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 the trumpet, the flashes, the lightning, they trembled and stood afar off. When God has told them, come. Verse 19. Then they said to Moses, oh, you speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. So the God that invited you to hear his voice, was he going to kill you before? He invited you. He knows that you are dust. And he knows how he's coming to talk to you. But because they washed their clothes and not their hearts, they could not stand God. God is too holy. We cannot pretend. We, the Bible says, Rent your heart and not your garments. They washed their garments. They took a nice shower. But inside their heart was still hardened. They never washed their hearts. They never cleansed their hearts. And that is what God looks at. And that is what makes people either go to God or run away from God. It is the heart condition. God knew when he invited them to speak to them. And yet when they heard just the, the trumpets and everything, they're like, no, 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 Moses, you, you go listen to him and come and talk to us. We, we cannot stand this. Because they are not ready to listen. And then they will come back to you and ask you, where is the proof that there's God? So let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. I just want to expound on this so that we know that what we are talking about is real. Deuteronomy 5, verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22 down. I'll read from 22 downwards, maybe to 27. But let's just listen to what is happening here. So these words, the Lord spoke to all your assembly. This is a summary of what happened, yeah? In the mountain, from the midst of the fire, the cloud and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. So God spoke to them. If, if we go back to Exodus, yeah? But I'm not going back there. If you read more, you'll see. This is just a summary. He added no more, and he wrote them on two tablets of stones and gave them to me. This is Moses summarizing what God did. So it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was burning with fire that you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, verse 24, Surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice 
from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God speaks with man, yet he still lives. You see, God speaks to everybody. Now and therefore, why should we die in the continued? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and have lived? So they didn't die the first time. Why do they, what, what makes them think they are going to die now? Just because they are not willing. Their hearts are hardened. Who? Who? Verse 26. For who is there of all flesh? That's among every human being in this world. Who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have. So they, they, they agree as we have and lived. So they heard and they were still alive. And yet they are like, no, we don't want any more. That's enough for us. Verse 27. They told Moses, you go near and hear all that the Lord our God may say and tell us all that the Lord our God says to you and we will hear and do it. Did they hear and do it? No, they did not. They did not because their hearts were far from God. They claimed yeah, many. Like I said, many Christians claim we are Christians, we go to church, we like Jesus, we love you, they sing beautifully and everything. And yet, they don't know who God is. So that's why I keep saying Christianity is not a religion. It's not going to church. It's your relationship, personal relationship with Jesus. If you have not accepted him, if his spirit is not in you, then you are not, then you are just doing what any other person is doing. You can worship whatever you like. It is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that teaches. His spirit lives in us and instructs us and that's why we need to Open our heart. Rent our hearts and not our clothes. Wash our hearts and not our clothes. Live a consecrated and holy life. God Almighty asked human beings to consecrate themselves. And, and he came down to speak. And, all the, and they all heard his voice. Yet they were terrified because they were not ready to change. They were not ready to change. They asked Moses, you go and listen and tell us. And then when Moses comes to, to tell them, they will do what they like. And, and they caused Moses to, to, to miss the physical Canaan. Because they, they, they got on his name so much, God said, speak to the rock. Moses took his rod and beat the rock. God is like, so now you are listening to the people and not to me. That's how much the church can drive people. They are there, but they are, they are not there with their hearts. May we always have a heart for Jesus in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would touch us. Give us that grace to, to, to receive you, to listen to you, to have the willingness to know you that it might be well with us, that we might be spared from the pit and that we might be spared from the sword because this is your will for us. Mm. Father, grant this in the name of Jesus. We, 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 human beings are so easily satisfied to live on the surface. We are not prepared to go deep and God is not a surface God. If we want to hear God speak clearly, then we must be ready to live a consecrated life. You have to forsake the flesh and, 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 and live by the Spirit. Jesus says, even in that Deuteronomy, I, we just read five of you, go to six from, verse five, from verses uh, uh, 
it's just it's just one page Deuteronomy 6 from verse 5 says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength there is no wishy washy there is no surface thing there everything you've got Make up your mind. There's no hard, half-hearted service to God. This half-hearted service will no longer suffice in these end times. Oh, I, I, I go to church on Sunday and, and I've done my duty. I tick the box. No. That is half-hearted. That is, that is surface. God wants the whole of your Heart, the whole of your soul, and with all of your strength. Because he gave you all of himself. Going back to Job, so that we can bring it to an end. Job 28, 28 says, Job 28, 28. And to man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Amen. That is the question. From where does wisdom come? Amen. Wisdom comes by you setting yourself aside for God Mm. and shunning evil. That's why I said this half-hearted service will no longer suffice. Depart from evil, that is understanding. When you have made up your mind to depart, to walk away from evil, when people laugh at stupidity, you walk away. You don't say, oh, because others are doing it, I can do it. You are not others. We have to learn to listen to the wisdom of God. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. A lot of things in this earthly realm are concealed. They are hidden from mortals. So in order for us to be enlightened with the light of life, which is Jesus, we must seek godly wisdom. By choosing his ways over our ways, by going the extra mile, by renting our heart and not our garments. And so I conclude with what Elihu said. And this is, I I I reform it. By the Holy Spirit. Hold your peace. Listen to the greatest teacher, the Holy Spirit, and He will teach you wisdom. Amen? Amen. Hold your peace. Don't run around. Don't be over busy. Hold your peace. Take out a few minutes in a day and sit in God's presence. Listen to His word. Because He says, if you will listen to my word and, and obey it and walk by it, I will make you a special treasure among all the people. So it is for your advantage. You you will be a special treasure to God. We read in the Psalms earlier, you are the apple of his eyes, isn't it? You are chosen chosen out among nations. So hold your peace. Listen to the Holy Spirit and he will teach you wisdom in Jesus name Amen. let us pray father we thank you for this word we bless your name yes, how loving you are mm. who are we that you should be so mindful that you come to us with these gems with this with this revelation with this mystery that is is hidden from others and you just reveal it to us lord we thank you that you have already made us special. 
And we pray that we would learn to walk in your ways, to listen to your voice, and to obey your voice, that it might be well with us. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.